um, we go through the agenda discussing life cycle design methodology and the life cycle assessment tool to, to deliver that um, methodology. We'll look at the problems that we're trying to solve, the environmental problems we're trying to solve with, with the LCA methodology, um, how LCA can help us get there to harmony with the planet, if you like. And we'll be more specific um, about LCA application in Green Star. So there's a lot to cover. Um, I'll try my best to go through everything, but there's going to be some opportunity for us to discuss towards the end. So first of all, we'll look at life cycle design. As I said, it's a design methodology that uses life cycle assessment to quantify, compare, and improve. And it's very important that we try to improve our projects with life cycle assessment, not only to quantify and compare. And you can do, you can use life cycle assessment to improve the sustainability performance of any product or service. So it's a very broadly uh, used methodology. ITU is specialized in life cycle design of the build form. So that's what we do. We do mainly buildings and infrastructure. And we're focused on environmental and financial performance, but not so much um, in social sustainability at this stage. So when we look at a building, for example, when we try to improve the environmental performance of a building, how do we know? That's what got me hooked with life cycle assessment is using a, a scientific method to quantify things and understand, you know, are we just a little bit better or are we actually driving a sustainable feature? You know, how far are we from the target that we need to go to the right planet here and get away from the, the planet on the left? So I think that's the most exciting part about life cycle assessment is being able to measure environmental performance. So to quantify a performance, the whole building performance, we'll look at the whole life cycle impacts from raw materials extraction, the transportation of those materials to a manufacturing facility and then a finished product to a, a construction site and then all the construction impact with equipment and trade staff and most importantly the use of that building throughout its lifespan all the recurring impacts with maintenance repair and also what happens to that building at the end of its life you know all the recycling uh, opportunities but also the impacts associated with waste processing transporting of those uh, waste materials and the reinsertion of those materials into the productive um, economy if you like so that's covering all the life cycle impacts when we quantify life cycle impacts there's a bunch of tools and procedures to help us uh, with the process. So most importantly, there are the international standards that will guide us with the process and the calculation method. But we also have to define the scope and the system boundary, you know, what's included in our assessment. What are we considering? What parts of a building are we including? And we have to be transparent with that so we can produce comparable results. We have to specify the functional unit and we'll discuss that in more details in a little bit. Uh, the service life is how long those buildings will last for and it's very subjective to precisely estimate the life of um, the buildings or projects that we're working on but we can at least assign a certain period that will um, 
allow all the recurring impacts to happen so we can quantify those as well. Um, we also use the life cycle inventory, which is the database that runs um, in the background of the software, the E2 LCD software, for example, with all the materials, um, the uh, inventory with all the energy and transport data. So that's all forming the life cycle inventory to allow us to conduct the LCA. There are also multiple indicators or the impact categories that we'll, we'll look at and the, the compliant tools, there are multiple compliant tools for various applications. So they all need to be following those international standards. So EN 15978, if you haven't heard of this standard before, um, it's the built environmental performance calculation method. So it sets the details of how to produce a whole of building LCA according to EN 15978. So you can produce comparable and technically valid assessments. And the E2 LCD software calculates and produces results in a format that is compliant with the standard. So it's nothing that we have created on our own. We just remove the complexity, complexity of the calculation and transfer it to a, a user-friendly application. So, but essentially it's just following the technical requirements from the standard. The scope and boundary, this is quite important and you see especially in Green Star there's a lot of mention about the different modules, what's included, um, how much you can benefit from the operational energy savings for example. So it's very important that we understand this uh, different modules here that form the, the system boundary. You will note that the black dotted line is the building life cycle system boundary, which encompass uh, module A, module B, and module C. And we also have the, the system boundary for the LCA study, which is the, gray, the green dotted line, which also includes the module D. So the module A is the product stage where we have raw material extraction, transportation of those materials to a manufacturing plant and the manufacturing impacts itself. Then we have the construction stage, including the transportation and the construction and installation at the construction site. When we move to the use module, we have um, maintenance, repair, replacement, all those to account for the ongoing recurring impacts, but we also include the operational energy and operational water. In Australia, most of the impacts are dominated by the operational energy, and we'll have a look at that in more details. But it's also important to consider the end of life module C1 to C4, so that includes the demolition of the building, a lot of energy with equipment and um, the, the trade staff go on site to demolish the building and the transportation of those uh, materials to a waste processing plant and all the energy associated with that and the disposal for those that are going to landfill. So there's quite a lot impact at the end of life as well and we need to think of ways to to reduce that by you know, designing for disassembly or reusing at the end of life. And module D is related to um, the benefits and loads beyond the building life cycle. So for example uh, a steel that gets recycled at the end of its life will get uh, reported in module D uh, or any energy that is exported back to the grid, electricity grid, that's also 
reported in module D. So it's just a way to demonstrate in the benefits beyond the building boundary itself. Uh, then we discuss a little bit about functional unit. And this is a very simple but important example of how to compare two different designs with the same end product. Now, when you look at these coffee machines and you try to compare the environmental impact of both, when you look at the one on the left, you're like, ah, oh, it's you know fairly small. There's not a lot of embodied impacts. Uh, probably requires a lot less energy to operate. So, it looks like this one on the left has a better performance, whereas the one on the right is very heavy and very you know a lot of stainless steel, um, very energy intensive. But when you look on a per cup of coffee basis, you know, the one on the left might produce you a thousand cups of coffee and then, you know, you break a button and then you have a little problem, you have to chuck it away. Whereas the one on the right, you have, you have a problem, you can replace a part get it going again and it probably lasts a long time. So you diluting those initial impacts over time and you're getting more out of your primary function, which is to produce a cup of coffee. So the functional unit in this case would be the impact here in this example is kilograms of carbon per cup of coffee. And the one on the right will have a lot better outcome so we do the same approach for the build form. And here a few examples for a residential building. For example, we use the impact per occupant per year, and that could be four tons of carbon. You know, that's that's the average benchmark for the Australia Australian dwelling. For a commercial building, we can look at a gross floor area. For hotels, we can look at impact per bed, or for a stadium, we can look at the impact per seat, for example. So the more people we can get into the stadiums, you know, the better environmental performance you have on a per seat basis. So it's very important concept, the functional unit. And also very important for us to maximize the primary function of the projects that we're working on. When we look at uh, uh, life cycle inventory, here's an example for a product. You know, a steel uh, manufacturing process from raw materials extraction to uh, manufacturing to the use and then the, the credit for recycling. When we look at a more detailed information about the life cycle of e steel, we can have access to the environmental product declaration, which is the life cycle assessment for products. And on this um, example here, we can see um, different, at the top, we can see different life cycle stages from module, from, from module A to module B, C and D. And only the product stage and the module D the recycling stage are included on this example. So the environmental product declaration is specific about materials. And here you can see for global warming potential indicator, we have the majority of the impacts happening at the product stage, A1, so the raw material extraction. We have some impacts related with transport, and some related with manufacturing, but we've also got some recycling credit. So there's a negative uh, number here showing this will be a benefit for this uh, product. So looking at this environmental product declaration for a steel, we can see that 1,000 kilograms of steel is equivalent to 1,823 kilograms of carbon. Uh, equivalent. So that's what we use to create the inventory. So that's a, 
a group of different materials put together as the, the materials inventory. Okay, so I just thought I would show you this in a little bit more details. And also to distinguish between LCA of a product, which is the environmental product declaration, and the whole building LCA that will use that EPD as part of the, the analysis. Um, we'll look at different impact categories and I'll put a little bit more emphasis here on the categories included in the Green Star requirements. Uh, the global warming potential, although very basic, a lot of people um, make confusion with the, the ozone depletion. So here we have the, the greenhouse gas or the greenhouse effect where the, the greenhouse gas uh, trap the heat prevent the heat to escape, creating the greenhouse effect and warming the planet. Um, we also have to assess the impacts related with eutrophication, which is uh, excess of nutrients in, in water bodies, mainly caused by industrial process or fertilizers in agriculture. So we, we can look at that as well when doing LCAs. We have ozone depletion, and this is an interesting photo from 1979 and 2008. With the Montreal Protocol, we see you know, when they banned all the CFCs, there's a, a recovery with the ozone, with the, the ozone layer. So it's quite exciting to see that it's a global um, commitment to, to reduce the environmental impact, and there's a positive result, um, what, 40 years later. Um, so here's the impact with acidification. So a lot of the acidification potential comes from um, thermal power plants, the burning coal and generating those um, acid rains. And we also look at the smog, which is the photochemical ozone creation potential, so that fine uh, layer of pollution that you can see on the horizon when you're on the, ma on the major big cities. This is a photo of LA, I'm pretty sure. And, and we also have the abiotic depletion potential, so the depletion of the elements and also fossil fuel, so two different types of abiotic depletion. Um, indicators that will we'll get covered by the, the Green Star requirements as well. So after you've quantified the impacts, we'll compare the results between the reference model and the proposed model, so we know how much better we are against our a benchmark or our reference model. Um, there's a lot of details about the, the assumptions and the specifications of your reference model, but essentially it's, it's, a, it's a building that will provide the same function, it, it's in the same location, it has the same orientation. It could be an actual building or it could be um, just a reference building. Uh, a hypothetical building, but it needs to be code compliant. It needs to um, have the same function as I mentioned before. So there's a lot of details that goes into fairly comparing the reference and proposed model and not um, downgrading your reference model to make your proposed model uh, looks better. So we need to be careful with that to make it realistic to realistically reflect the business's usual practice on a reference model and show uh, a genuine improvement on your proposed model. After you've quantified and you compare the results, you can then improve the performance and the different ways to improve um, the functionality of your project and also the efficiency. So we, we like to highlight the, the functionality because 
design life, for example, is so important. You know, if you can extend the lifespan of your project, you're going to dilute the initial impact with the construction, with the foundations, with all the steel and concrete that goes into that building. So you're just diluting those impacts over a longer period of time. So to, to extend design life, there's a lot of different um, variables. You know, it's the density of your project, the location, it's the aesthetics, it's future-proofing your design. So there's a lot of uh, creativity that goes into, into that process. And also to, to maximize functionality, we can look at the functional unit and increase, for example, for residential projects, we can increase the occupancy, you know, how we can get more people living on that space, how we can provide more shelter, comfort people, happy families living on that uh, dwelling. So you're increasing their functionality by increasing the number of people. And when you, when you produce your results on a per occupant basis, then you, you're going to have a better performance because you have more people. And it's the same thing with net letable area for commercial projects, for example. Now, if you reduce common areas, if you reduce um, hallways and uh, stairs, number, you know, the area, the common area, and you get more out of your building, a net letable area, you're going to get more value for that project and if you divide the impacts per meter square of net level area you're going to get a better result as well so really important concept uh, the, the functionality improvement then we get to the most common uh, improvements related to uh, efficiency you know optimizing car park in common areas and that and you also optimize the energy efficiency you know not a lot ventilation and lighting required for the common areas, um, the common lighting and air conditioning, energy efficiency improvements. We also have building automation with sensors and the building management systems and the introduction of renewable energy with solar thermal and solar electricity and also the materials which becomes more important you know the more you improve the energy efficiency of your building the more relevancy you have for the materials so we'll look at the, the supply chain you know, where the materials are coming from how durable they are what you know the the warranty period on those materials what are their maintenance requirements and the end of life impacts so if you can produce a facade for example that will will allow you to disassemble at the end of its life. You know, you can dilute, dilute that impact and reuse that uh, facade on a, on a different project. So now looking um, specifically at Green Star, uh, the performance pathway in, in Green Star is to conduct a life cycle assessment and you can get multiple points for various ratings. So design and speed, you can get up to seven points. The interiors, you can get 19 points. And communities, which is not very common, but we have already done a few, can get five points. And you can also get two additional points for exam exemplary performance, you know, just achieving uh, a higher savings beyond the minimum requirements. So it's quite... Um, substantial amount of points for the life cycle assessment credit. So this is the breakdown for the design and S build and especially considering the new version, version 1.2. Uh, previously, most of your credits would come from the comparative assessment. You, will demonstra you would demonstrate the improvement be uh, between the reference and the proposed model and you could get up to six points. And uh, those savings would mainly come from the energy savings. You know, and you could get an additional point for the additional life cycle impact reporting, which is reporting on additional indicators. And most of the projects were getting you know, seven out of the seven available points. 
but there was also an issue with the double double counting projects were getting points for the greenhouse gas savings and also the same improvements we get in the projects the the lca points so with the new credit in version 1.2 the the comparative assessment will be limited to three points but it, that gives you more opportunity to get the other points in different areas. And it's actually driving the right use of the methodology, which is to engage the, the LCA early in your design and conduct, for example, the LCA design review, which is one point, but also demonstrate how the LCA has uh, influenced the design you know, with the material selection, different scenarios, comparing different materials or uh, different uh, construction process that you can demonstrate uh, improvement for the construction process as well and also the additional uh, impact reporting so just gathering more data around the, the different indicators to, to help GBCA uh, produce the benchmarks and promote LCA and actually you know define a more specific benchmark for us to compare against. So I'll show, I'll show in more details what this means with, uh, with the example inside the software. But I'd like to show you first the interiors, which is essentially the same approach. Now you have the, the comparative assessment limited to 12 points, and you get the additional points with those um, other improvements. So the material selection, the LCA design review, the additional reporting, and the construction process improvement. So the comparative assessment with, with E2 LCD, it's, it's, it's now easier because we have um, automated reporting. So once you've done your modeling, you can produce, you can do that comparison automatically inside the software by using the, the life cycle design feedback report. And that will meet the, the life cycle, the LCA design review criteria. So that you need to demonstrate to GBCA that you've used the LCA early, the early in your design process to inform the design team and you've tested different scenarios and that can be demonstrated in your life cycle design feedback report. And when you progress with your design development and you're ready to submit the final documentation, that's when you produce the final life cycle assessment report with all the final savings. So it's all produced via the automated reporting in E2 LCD. Let me, ju let me jump into the software here quickly. Before, let me just double check if there's any major questions coming through. We've got a few questions here that I'll answer when we get to the question um, section. So let me just show you the, the table that we produce inside the software looks like this. So it's a little bit complicated. I'll try to use this um, highlighted here to make it easier. So on the on the left hand side here we have the indicators. So this is a list of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven indicators, the main indicators required by GBCA. Then you see that we have different stages. So we have the stage A, stage B, stage C, and uh, stage D. And then the total result here. So all these numbers here are very complicated. Don't want you to understand the numbers in detail. It's more the format of the table, how the different indicators are reported in different uh, modules. And with version 1.2, when you read the credit requirement in details, there's a mention about module B6, which is operational energy. So the savings related to module B6 is kept 
at three points. So when you're doing your comparative assessment, if you have savings related to materials and construction, for example, module A, or if you have savings related to um, end of life, you can get up to six points with your comparative assessment. But if most of those savings are coming from module B6, which is operational energy, then you're going to get capped at three points. So that's to avoid the double counting in operational energy savings. Okay? But if the savings are coming from different areas, different modules, then you can go beyond those three points for the comparative assessment. So that's a little bit confusing. We've had a few inquiries about that. So I thought it would be worthwhile uh, going to a little bit more details. So let me go back to the software here. So here's an example that is a table produced inside the software that shows, again, different indicators here on the left. And on this list here, we're also including the additional indicators required by Green Star to get the additional point. And on the far right hand side here, we have a final results with the savings. So these savings here, these are the cumulative savings that will get your points. So you have to add the savings for the main indicators, so global warming potential, ozone depletion, uh, eutrophication, acidification, abiotic depletion elements, and abiotic depletion fossil fuel. You add all of those percentages and you get your green star points. So uh, let me just clear this. So this is how it works with the, the LCA credit. You add the impact reduction, the percentage impact reduction, and then you have the, the points awarded. So it's a cumul uh, cumulative um, impact reduction. I hope that's, that's clear. That's a little bit difficult to understand at first, but um, that's how it works. That's how you calculate your points. And then you will add the other points with the, the LCA design review, the additional impact reporting, and so on. Um, let me go back to the presentation and um, oops, pointer and show you a little bit more about those different um, points you can get beyond the, the comparative assessment. So the material selection, you have the um, you're driving what we like to, to call the, you know, these four steps. When you calculate, you compare, you improve, and you certify. So with the material comparison, you can run the recommendations in, in E2LCD, and then you can build this audit trail. You know, you run what happens if I change, you know, the, the type of concrete, for example. What, what happens if I change the the floor finish if I replace the, the carpet for uh, polished concrete. Then you can track uh, the savings you get for that recommendation and then you can report that very easily with the software. So it really helps you get that additional point. Same thing with the construction process. You can compare different um, equipment or you can assign different transportation impact for those equipment. So if you, you know, sourcing a crane locally or if that crane is coming from a, a, a more distant location, you can compare that and, and demonstrate by using the, the recommendation in the LCA how, you know, how much that is saving on your, on your overall result and you can track that, you can record that recommendation and that goes into your report. So you automatically producing the content that you need to, to get those additional points. And that's all inside the software. 
the LCA design review, uh, this is one of the, 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 the points that I like the most because it's, you know, bringing the LCA use early on. Uh, as I said, you know, you use the, the design feedback report to engage with the design team. And then you run, uh, but you can also run the, the, the target setting report, which is a, a more uh, a basic report at, uh, at the concept stage. Then you share the, the outcomes of that report. You know, what is the current uh, performance of your project? If you're targeting 20% reduction or 30% reduction in carbon emissions, for example, you can just set those targets and look at, at different strategies. It's, it's kind of like a shopping list, different options that you can pick and choose from to get to the target. And that's all done you know, at the concept stage and it's um, summarized on the, on the target setting report. You can either use the target setting report, which is a more basic report, or you can use the, the life cycle design feedback report, which is a little bit more complete. The only limitation with the target setting report is that you can only report on three indicators at the moment. So we are uh, improving that. So you can report on all those um, 12 indicators that you need for, for Green Star. So that's the only uh, limitation with the target setting report at the moment. So after you've done your improvements, then you go to the final stage, which is to certify and get your peer review completed. So that's also a requirement in Green Star, is that you get an independent review, someone to look at your model to validate your inputs and also to check it against the, the, ISO, the ISO process. So inside the software, you notice for those who are familiar with the software, um, that we have a lot of different quality checks. Um, so for example, um, we have quality checks that will look at, you know, Temporal relevancy, geographical relevancy, precision, completeness, technological relevancy, consistency, and repro reproducibility. So all of these quality checks, they are part of the, the ISO requirements. So it's a very um, fine and thorough process to guarantee the models are complete, that you have followed the standard. It will also validate your claims. Now, if you recording the recommendations properly and you documenting your design changes, it's very easy to track and, and validate the, the, the LCA claims during that peer review. It will also check if your report is transparent, consistent, so you can uh, compare different buildings so that's very important for us to promote genuine um, performance you know that you're comparing buildings that have the same scope and it's also scientifically and technically valid so that you have some applied some um, technical and scientific approach to your modeling so this is more related to the commercial uh, model with E2. We've developed E2 LCD and it's part of our terms and conditions of software use is that all models that are produced using E2 LCD that are used for commercial gain. So if you're making money, you know, selling LCA services or using the, the reports or the results, um, if you're getting paid for that service, it all needs to be rewarded for that work as well, for providing you the software. So in order to do that, we require that all models have to be peer reviewed by eTool. So that's part of the, the business mo um, model that we operate on. So we also have a lot of different compliance criteria that you can get more details with the, the, the GBCA, the credit description. 
the LCA pathway criteria, uh, essentially looking at the, the inventory at the LCA tools, make sure the tools that you're using are compliant, um, the additional impact indicators that you need to report against, they're all available in, tool, in E2LCD. You don't have to worry about that if you're using our software. The reference building details, so it's very important that you get a, a, a genuine benchmark that you're comparing against. The competent LCA practitioner is, is something tricky because when you're first starting with the, the LCA modeling, you don't have the experience, but you need to be a competent LCA practitioner to, to qualify to, to do this work. So we often use the co-authoring option, which is doing the study in collaboration with the software user and the GBCA will accept that. As, as, so that will help you get to five studies completed and will um, get you the, the, the LCA comp competency. And there's also a lot of um, documentation that you need to submit, you know, the, the template and the technical evidence. There's now the LCA calculator in version 1.2 that you input the results from that table that I showed you earlier, and it will automatically calculate the points for you. Um, so please uh, double check all of those requirements on the, on the credit description.